Hi, welcome to the Game Splanner. I'm Jeff the Game Splanner, and today I'm Game Splaining Whistle Stop. So this is Whistle Stop. It is set up as a two-player game. The only thing that's different on a four-player game, you would be using four trains instead of five in each color. On a five-player game, you're using merely three in each color. That is the only real difference other than the length of the game. So with two players, you're playing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve turns. Three players is eleven turns. Four players is ten turns, and five players is nine turns each. What you do on your turns is use four elements. You start the game with two coal and one whistle. You can use them to move your train this direction from the right hand side of the board to the left hand side of the board. Each little circle is a stop. So blue might use a coal to move this train to here. He would get that color cube, which is a brown cube. You can keep a maximum of 10 cubes. If you have to take more in and you already have 10 cubes, you need to discard. So you only have 10 cubes maximum there. I have another coal so I can move another train. I may wish to move this train some more. So there's no track for him to go to. He's not allowed to go backwards. He could go up to that spot if he wished, but he doesn't wish to. So what he now does is he places one of these tracks. He hasn't yet hit a stop. So he might, on his next portion of his turn, place another one in and that would bring him through to there, which would then grant him a gray cube. So you're going from stop to stop. Each stop costs you one coal. Whistle allows you to move to two stops. So from here, he might go to there. That's one, two stops away. He doesn't get the benefit of the first stop that he's missed, but he's able to get a little bit further. The other thing that you can do only with the whistle, you can't do it with coal, is you can move back to the right hand side of the board to be able to get colors or, or tokens that are further along that way than where you currently are. You'll notice there are some spots out in the middle of the board. Each of the little ones can only have one train on it. These big ones can have any number of trains on them. And what happens in this location is he gets a cube of the general color and one of the special colors. So the special colors are these three, red, blue, and green. The other three are the general colors. So he can take one of the red and say one of the white for stopping there. He doesn't have any more tokens, so he can't do his fourth action. He could have chosen to stop after two actions or one or even do nothing if he really wanted. That's probably not a good move, but he could choose to do that. Let's say, for example, he actually took a gray instead of the white at the end. The other thing that you're able to do is you can get two of these upgrades. Now what the upgrades do, there's a, a whole bunch of them that actually say on the rules what each of them does, but it costs whatever the cubes are at the top. So this player has two gray cubes, he might pull this upgrade in. What that allows him to do now on future turns is he can spend a coal to get a gold. The gold has a number on the back, which is points at the end of the game, and they just go back into the bank. Notice there are some points here. You don't get them straight away. Whoever maintains that upgrade at the end of the game will get the points. So if pink on a future turn thought they wanted that, they would need to pay the two gray cubes to the bank as well, but they would also need to then pay the blue player one of the three colored cubes to be able to take that off them or purchase that off them. The coal yard, if you end up at the coal yard, so imagine he's managed to get down there, you gain two coal. He still has two spaces, so he could then use one of those coal to move again, which would get him a red cube because he stopped on the spot with the red cube. You don't have to do all your moves with one train. You could use any of the trains that you wish. The trading post allows you to trade in one general cube for two coal, or one general cube for 
one whistle or one general cube for a different colored general cube. It also allows you to trade in one of these special cubes, one of the colored ones, for two general cubes or a different colored colored cube. You'll notice there are two spots here that have special names on them. These are the towns. So they are connected with these cards. The way these work is whenever you go onto one of them, you need to be able to pay the colored cubes that are in the top. So in this case, it's a brown and a white. So he put the brown and the white back into the bank and that would then allow him to, number one, take the matching token and they're important for the end of the game and he gets these points straight away. So he would get five points for going there. If he died here with a red and a white, he would get seven points. On future turns, he can go there if he had the cubes for it. So let's imagine he had a white as well and he could spend those white and red cube to get seven points and he gets one of those cards. If he went back to this one, that would be okay, but he doesn't have the cubes. So he would actually lose a point for going there. If you don't spend the cubes, you don't get any of these share cards. The importance of those shares is at the end of the game, whoever has the most of each different type of share is going to get 15 points. So there are five different shares available and any of the tiles that aren't in the middle are in those piles waiting to come out or in people's hands. Bear in mind that if he hangs on to this one at the end of the game and still has it in his hand, he's going to lose an extra 10 points. But whoever has the most shares at the end of the game would get 15 points. If, say for example, both players had one of that share each, Whoever has the lowest number, so the blue player who has number one, he would get the 15 points. The pink player would not. The other element that you're trying to achieve is to get to this side of the board. If you manage to build a track all the way through and get down here, the tile is then asking for three different colors of cube. If he happens to have those three different cubes, he would pass them in, take 20 points for this tile, 10 points for that one, 25 for that. So he would take his 20 points, pass them into the bank and then this train would get placed on one of these locations and you would get the stuff that you were covering up. So if for example he went here, he would get a red cube, a piece of coal and a whistle. If he went up here, he would be able to gain one of any of the elements. That's what that little question mark is talking about. If However, he got here and he didn't have the cubes, he would lose five points. So by doing that without the thing, he would go back five points, but you still place that over into this area and get the resource. And this tile is saying you're going to get four points for every one of these tickets in your hand. So at the moment, this player would get eight points if he put a train onto here, but he would also then need to return one of their tickets to the deck by going there. The game lasts until all of these have been used. So I didn't say this earlier, but the very first thing that happens is everyone gets two pieces of coal, and this is how we track the turns. When you get to this one, everyone gets one whistle. So just be aware of that if you've been taking the coal and using it all, because in essence, you'll have four pieces of coal to start with. When you get to this turn, you may find that you don't have any coal uh, and you can only move one of your trains a whistle distance. When it's the end of your turn, if you only have one or two of these tiles, you redraw up to the three. Your choice is one of those three, or two of those three if you need to take two, or you could take the blind tile uh, that you don't know if you don't actually want any of them. So theoretically, he could take that one, and he doesn't really want one of those two, so he'll just take that. And now he has three tiles again, and it's the other player's turn. So scoring at the end of the game is firstly the 15 points for whoever has the highest number of these shares, 
or the lowest number if there's an equal no mount. You score any upgrade you own, so he'd get another three points for owning that at the end of the game. One point for each unused common resource. So if he had a grey one, he'd get one more point. Three points for each rare resource. One point for every two tokens that he has. So currently with that lineup, he'd be getting three points. There's two, two, and two. Lose 10 points for any specialty tile that's still in your hand that hasn't been placed on the board and adding any gold totals that you've got onto your points. Whoever has the highest point is the winner of the game and that will happen once this last lot of coal has been taken. Okay, I think that is everything for the moment. There may be a couple of other tiles that are in the decks uh, that will come out or may not come out, but I'll just double check on the rules for the meanings of any of them if you're not sure. Please go ahead and watch my games play to get a feel for how the game actually plays. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you would like to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email to thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplainer to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.